Thank you very much for joining us. I'm John Langler, and we start with new polling from the AARP. It shows Nevada's Senate and gubernatorial races are still very tight. In the Senate race, incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto still has a slight four point lead over Republican Adam Laxalt. About 16% picked other options. Among Hispanic voters, uh, the senator holds a 46 to 32 percent lead, and they were tied among independents, as you see here, at 37 percent each. In the governor's race, incumbent Democrat Steve Sisolak leads Republican Joe Lombardo by three points. 20 percent picked other options. The Hispanic vote closer in the governor's race. Governor Sisolak now, as you see there, has a 10 point lead. Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo, the opposition, has a two point lead among independents at 34 to 32 percent. Meanwhile, this week, President Joe Biden took aim at his predecessor, former President Donald Trump. In a speech on Thursday, Mr. Biden called Mr. Trump and his allies threats to democracy. The president defined the upcoming midterms as a battle for the soul of the nation. Jesse Chinoa reports. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represented extremism. President Joe Biden gave a stark warning to voters ahead of the November elections, not only in a key battleground state, but in Philadelphia, where the founders signed the Declaration of Independence and wrote the Constitution. Equality and democracy are under assault. The president blamed Donald Trump and his allies for the recent threats against police officers, poll workers, and FBI agents, while he touted bipartisan wins in Congress on guns and infrastructure. There are far more Americans far more Americans from every, from every background of belief who reject the extreme MAG ideology than those that accept it. But more than 74 million Americans voted for Trump in 2020, and some of his biggest supporters in Congress flipped the script on President Biden. Joe Biden has launched an assault on the soul of America. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy argues the economy, immigration, crime, and education have only worsened under Democrats' control of the White House and Congress. Millions of Americans are falling backwards into poverty. McCarthy hopes to be speaker next year and promises if Americans put Republicans in control of the House, they will pass legislation to give parents more control over schools and investigate government agencies like the Justice Department. We will restore the soul of America. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Back here in Nevada, other races are starting to heat up. Democratic Congresswoman Dina Titus has launched this, her first ad in her re-election campaign. Her opponent for District 1 is Republican Mark Robertson. He hasn't bought any TV time just yet. In the governor's race, as you mentioned, Joe Lombardo, the Republican, is running attack ads against incumbent Governor Steve Sisolak. It's over a scandal involving COVID-19 testing contracts. The company involved North Shore billed $165 million to the state for testing. 96% of those tests later turned out to be inaccurate. Mr. Lombardo has asked the legislature to set aside money for those North Shore victims. Meanwhile, I spoke with Las Vegas Review Journal politics and government editor Steve Sibelius about the Hispanic vote leading into the midterms. And we also discussed whether Biden administration officials campaigning here in Nevada is good or bad for Democrats. One thing that you and I talked about a while ago when uh, President Biden's approval ratings were at pretty low levels in the 30 percent range um, was you were suggesting potentially that you don't think that he'd be coming to Las Vegas very often or to Nevada to support the candidates. Things have changed a little bit as an approval rating nationwide has gone up slightly. Do you envision that changing at all that whether it's President Biden or the vice president more of that White House uh, leadership might come to Nevada as we get down towards uh, Election Day? I, I still think I think it's, it's probably dubious for that to happen. Uh, uh, President Biden's approval rating has gone up, and it's gone up because he's accomplished quite a few things. Uh, when you, uh, when, when you, uh, you know, look away from the daily uh, uh, papers and just see a list of the things you've done, it's actually quite impressive. Um, uh, but, uh, but I still think uh, that he would probably, in the environment that we're in now, probably be more of a liability to a candidate than, than, a, than an asset. And so I don't think uh, you'll see that. That, uh, uh, before the end of the campaign um, with the president or the vice president, yeah. frankly. The vice president Kamala Harris has been here a couple of times recently talking about Lake Mead and so forth, right. but the president has been here in, in some time. Uh, final question here. Let's talk about another issue that has lingered for a long, long time. It's a very important issue in Nevada. Uh, Latino voters. It's such an important part of our community and of the electorate right now, and both major parties are pushing to try and get that vote right now. Um, what kind of outreach has been made 
into the Latino community, into those organizations to try and, and make that sway? We're, Republicans have really kind of upped their game in this area because uh, they, they see an opportunity there. Um, uh, I don't know how big of an opportunity it actually is, but uh, President Trump famously got more Hispanic voters in 2020 than he did in 2016. And so Republicans, I think, are looking at that as an opportunity. And so the campaigns have, uh, have uh, groups like Latinos for Laxalt. Uh, the uh, Lombardo campaign has a Hispanic outreach person. Um, they're not neglecting that community, which is very smart because uh, you, you can't take them for granted. Harry Reid, uh, the late Harry Reid once famously said, you know, I don't understand why anyone who is a Latino would vote for a Republican. And that, I think, kind of betrayed this idea that, uh, that those votes belong to a certain party. And they certainly don't. And there, there, are, there are ways that Republicans can sort of uh, reach out uh, to that community. And I think they're trying to do that in, in many different ways. Yeah. Voter registration numbers still favor Democrats here in Nevada. However, Republicans keep closing ground. Two years ago, Democrats had an 87,000 person registration advantage across Nevada. As you can see on your screen there, Republicans have nearly cut that number in half. It's about 46,000 now. Next on Politics Now, keeping criminals out. Las Vegas says it's the goal of a new plan. Up next, the challenges a proposed new stay out order could face. Running short on teachers, new proposals to try and turn around a nationwide teacher short. Silver State Schools Credit Union. Welcome back to Politics Now. A Republican running for Clark County Administrator now faces a DUI charge. Happened after a Metro Police traffic stop on that woman there, Patsy Brown. Officers say they found an open bottle of vodka and a red solo cup of alcohol in her car at the time. Brown is also in trouble for driving without headlights. Brown's campaign sent us the letter you see on your screen there. It gives her version of events, and it's different than what you hear from Metro Police. We have the full story for you at 8newsnow.com. Vandalism at the Reno office of Republican Nevada gubernatorial candidate Joe Lombardo. This picture you can see there shows a broken window. Campaign staff, it happened early Wednesday morning, and that is at uh, Mr. Lombardo's office. In response, Nevada Party Chair Michael McDonald tweeted this. It's time to start hitting back, continuing, do it at the ballot box. Let your voice, let your vote rather, be your voice. Earlier this year, Clark County instituted an order out ordinance. It allows a judge to ban people from the Las Vegas Strip for up to a year if they have prior felony convictions. So now the city of Las Vegas is considering a similar measure. The proposal would impact, as you see there, most of downtown from Washington down to Sahara and I-15 to Eastern. 
It's a measure that concerns the executive director of Nevada's ACLU chapter, Atar Hasibula. The order out provisions in Clark County just passed one. It's, you know, we're, we're assessing that. We're looking at that. That might be subject to a challenge at some point. There's complexities associated with the way that things are drafted, and they're drafted in very clever fashions to try to give maximum flexibility to those that are drafting it to say, you know, it's really at the court's discretion as a condition of, of, uh, of an alternative really to incarceration at that period when there's when that's occurring, but really what we're seeing right now by the city of Las Vegas is an even more sweeping uh, attempt at creating an order out provision. And so this isn't even downtown Las Vegas. The last parameter we checked was, well, I guess it depends on how you define downtown, but it looks like it extended to Eastern. What is most concerning to you about the order out corridors in the begin period before we talk about the city of Las Vegas? Yeah, measure? Just the general concept of having an order out provision is problematic on a number of fronts. The, the biggest of which is it fundamentally interferes with basic constitutional liberties. So if you define a corridor and you have a corridor, any specific area, and the provision from a court comes back and says, you know, you cannot be in this area, particularly when it's just a an area that's really driven by what they're, you know, purporting to be tourism and tourism and uh, related issues and um, potential income that, that is derived there versus any sort of real rational basis or, or logical connection to what is occurring there, it becomes problematic. And so you have the ability um, to really interfere with those rights. That might include First Amendment rights, but it also includes the ability of someone to even travel through and pass through that area without even having knowledge um, that they might need to go through that area. So they're going to have to try to find a way to work around a confined area with no basis to really do so. But those who are behind this suggest that order out quarters, it's not for sort of anyone. These are people with criminal backgrounds that they're trying to sort of, sort of keep out of areas with a lot of people, populated areas, so that there's a, there's a criminal element to this versus just sort of saying you can't go downtown or you can't go on the strip. Well, so when this was initially utilized, which you know, we weren't supportive of then because it still interfered with rights, but when it was initially utilized, it was primarily um, utilized in situations as they defined it with respect to prostitution-related offenses um, and those that emanated therefrom, and they were trying to prevent that from being very pervasive in certain areas like this. What these provisions now have done is expanded to any crime. So you can be accused of anything that has nothing to do with someone else. For instance, um, you know, we're, we're suing the Board of Pharmacy right now for, for cannabis descheduling because it's still on the books. But if you were to send your buddy 15 bucks because you went to a dispensary and you got half of, you know, half of a pack of edibles back, um, you might be subject to uh, a felony at that point. But even if you weren't, even if it was lower, under this provision, a court could still consider whether, whether or not to decide to keep you out of specific areas of town. What kind of... Uh concerns have you brought to maybe city council members or the mayor's office about something like this? There's huge issues there. I mean, first and foremost, uh, you know, one of the provisions of the bill that they have is that a court uh, is to consider factors and they're to ask the person um, that is before them, the defendant that's before them, um, specific factors about whether or not it might interfere with employment or their housing or, or religious services. But that's such a big area. What happens six months from now? You don't know you're going to pass through the area you're driving and you're just going through the area, now you're violating the order out provision, which means that they can come back at that point and charge you with another misdemeanor for violating that. So um, these issues are, you know, to be raised. This is a pattern, you know, from our perspective of behavior that's been engaged in by government. We're continuing to broaden the powers of government and the policing powers and regulatory powers of government. It's not making people any safer. They're not drawing any uh, analogies to what's actually occurring. Because uh, if they were, then the data would back it up. But data's been scarce. City of Las Vegas staff say this proposal is going to go to a recommending committee and then go back to the full council for action. It is on the agenda for this upcoming week. Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman declined our request for an interview, interview on this topic. Clark County School District has plans in the works to try and address the ongoing teacher shortage. It is a nationwide problem, though. On Wednesday, First Lady Jill Biden hosted a White House meeting with education officials, governors, and executives on the matter. Anna Warnicke reports. Good evening. The Biden administration says their new plan will help fill vacancies at schools across the nation by making it easier for applicants to find and apply for job openings. 
As students head back to class this fall, schools across the country are struggling to staff their classrooms. Our districts are having a harder time not just finding eligible candidates, but really any, any candidates at all. Tennessee Commissioner of Education Penny Schwinn says the Biden administration's new plan will fix that. On Wednesday, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and administration officials met with state and local leaders and top executives of job search companies like ZipRecruiter and Handshake to announce a new partnership that will help schools fill their vacancies. If we're serious in addressing the teacher shortage issue, we must first address the teacher respect issue. And the White House says the pandemic has made the staffing challenges worse. The Biden administration is encouraging state and school district leaders to use the money in the American Rescue Plan to increase teachers' salaries. If we want educators to be able to do what they do best, we have to give them the pay and the support that they need. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy agrees. We need to pay educators more money. There's no question about that. The White House is also reaching out to college students to help recruit and prepare them for a career in education. They're planning to host a virtual nationwide event this October. For now in Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Back to you. CCSD's plan includes nationwide license reciprocity, paid application fees, and higher wages. What's next for student loans? Coming up on Politics Now, we explore potential long-term fixes to the rising cost of higher ed. news now you're watching politics now the biden administration's plan to cancel ten thousand dollars in student loans has certainly met with some opposition to break down the court challenges and any long-term potential fixes i spoke with cbs news's natalie brand well, Natalie, cutting student loan debt was certainly a big goal for Democrats. Before we discuss some of the pushback in Washington, let's just talk about how the president's plan uh, would help potentially college graduates. Hi, John. Good to be joining you. Yeah, this is a three-part plan that was announced. The, the first piece of it is extending the pause for a final time, extending that pause on payments for the final time through December 31st of 2022, so the end of this year. And then people will need to begin repaying their loans. But the big headline that got a lot of attention was that up to $20,000 debt cancellation for Pell Grant recipients and then up to $10,000 thousand dollars if an individual makes less than one hundred and twenty five thousand dollar dollars now another big part of this plan that a lot of advocacy groups have been highlighting is 
President Biden proposed a rule to create a new income-driven repayment plan, which would allow borrowers to pay no more than 5% of their monthly discretionary income on undergraduate loans, and that would uh, be cut in half down from 10% currently. So that's a big piece of this that advocacy groups believe will make a big difference once this is implemented. Now, uh, as you probably know, no, uh, people are still kind of waiting to sign up for this. Uh, we are told that in coming weeks people can do so uh, with the hope that people can be able to apply uh, later this fall in order for things to kick in next year. So that's what President Biden wants. That's what advocates are saying. But there's certainly some pushback. And it's beyond just lawmakers in Washington. There are some other court challenges possible from the corporate world as well. What is the pushback right now to this proposal? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, quite a bit of pushback from Republicans here in Washington in terms of the potential cost of this plan, uh, impact on the economy. And in terms of legal challenges, uh, there are reports that state uh, Republican attorneys general may be pursuing or uh, kind of assessing some of their options here, as well as conservative groups. So we'll have to see uh, whether those legal challenges do materialize. Now, President Biden was actually asked by reporters about this, and he said, you know, people have a right to take this to court, but the administration actually put out its own uh, legal justification for this by the Department of Justice, saying that uh, there is a law on the books passed by Congress back in 2003, which allows the executive branch and the Department of Education to make, to make these sort of changes to the federal borrowing system during times of national emergency, uh, referencing the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in this latest legal memo. So the administration here is saying that this is still uh, because of the continued financial impact of the, of the pandemic, and that's some of their legal basis to justify these major changes. I'm also curious, and maybe I'm not sure if you can address this, but if the legal legal challenge to the president's executive order for this this college proposal the college student loan debt forgiveness is roughly the same as the executive orders from uh, pre former president Trump when he was trying to build the wall down on the southern border well, I mean, what we saw and what we've seen with a number of executive orders uh, just in, in history is that they get tied up in court. And then that raises the question of is implementation delayed uh, while this plays out in courtrooms? Uh, does this go head up to the U.S. Supreme Court? We'll have to wait and see. Senator Jackie Rosen from here in Nevada is involved in two proposed laws on higher ed costs for doctors right now, sort of tied into this. One pauses repayments for medical residents and interns. The other helps rural physicians with loan debt. Some legal experts think recent Supreme Court rulings could resurrect Yucca Mountain, the proposed nuclear waste dump site about 90 miles north of Las Vegas. It's been put on a shelf by the last several presidential administrations, but a law passed by Congress still specifies the permanent storage site for the waste has to be at Yucca Mountain. Recent Supreme Court rulings have rolled back administrative rulings, insisting states must follow what Congress says. Yucca Mountain could once again become an issue here in Nevada, despite almost bipartisan opposition. Next on 8 News Now, more restrictions on the way. The next step in several water restrictions that could kick in by the end of the year. This is
Mexico, and I approve this message. A look at Washington, D.C., one of many places we'll be watching next week as uh, things progress on Capitol Hill. In addition to Washington, D.C., we'll be watching what's happening here in southern Nevada and on what to watch. More water restrictions potentially on the horizon. The Las Vegas Valley Water District is considering the business impacts of three new proposals. Higher prices for the biggest water users, limiting some water features and less water for golf courses. That meeting is on Thursday. A final vote is expected sometime in October. Then on Thursday, or also on Thursday, I should say, the Clark County School District Board plans to update its student discipline plan. And we're waiting to see how they try and balance suspending fewer students and also cutting down on violence in the classrooms, an issue we saw quite a bit uh, in the last school year. We'll continue to follow that at CCSD moving forward. That'll do it for us here on Politics Now. Stay up to date online with all things political nationwide and here in Nevada at 8newsnow.com. We're back with you here on Saturday. We thank you so much for watching. Take care.